The National Cutting Horse Association presents Behind the Minds, a series by the Converse Cowboy, featuring Matt Gaines. Brought to you in part by Performance Horse Central and these fine sponsors. NCHA has always been a very important part of my life. Most importantly because um, at a very young age I lost my mother and it was this community, the NCHA community and the families and the friendships and everything that just kept me level and kept me focused on, on goals and they became my family, literally. I feel very close to so many people in this organization. So Mr. Matt Gaines, here we are. 2021 NCHA Futurity is here. I've been walking around today um, in the Will Rogers Coliseum and I can just feel the intensity. Everybody seems a little bit tight. It's the first go and uh, you drew up on the first day. Your second draw will be on Saturday, which is the fourth day. Yes, sir. How do you handle the, the variables that are out of your control like you're showing today and then you show four days from now? How do you handle that inconsistency? Try not to think about it. You know, basically, I just uh, try to take every day as it comes and and just prepare my horses accordingly. I try to keep it real simple, my approach real simple. You know, it's hard sometimes, especially the futurity, that first time you're gonna show that horse. It's hard to keep yourself from not tensing up a little bit, mm -hmm. getting a little bit nervous, because you've never shown these horses. So none of us really know for sure what's gonna happen. You know, is this horse gonna be a show horse? Is it not? You know, we've been to some pre-works. I haven't got to go to many this year, but most people have, you know, so they have that. They know how those horses work were at those pre-works in a show situation, but still it's different when you walk down there. So I mean, you kind of always have that in the back of your mind, but bottom line is you just got to go do your job. Will Rogers has this nostalgia about it. And so when your feet hit the dirt, and Will Rogers before that first go. What is that feeling like for Matt Gaines? I think it's a mixture of feelings. It's, it's excited, it's a little nervousness, it's anxiousness, you know, you're ready. Usually by the time you walk in there that first day, I'm usually like tired of all the preparation, I'm ready to go. I'm excited to go show those horses for the first time, find out what I have, and it's the futurity. I mean, I don't care who you are, if it's your first time here, you've been here 50 times, you know, everybody wants to win it. That's part of it and, you know, the excitement of that and I don't know, it's just the futurity is just different. There's a bunch of different feelings, but I'd say mostly excited, anxious, ready to get going and there's always a little bit of nervousness in there too. So something's different about this year compared to years past, and it's been talked about a lot. I think the NCHA has tried it before, um, but the pre-settle, what are your thoughts around that? What are the pros, what are the cons? The pros are, is done right, it should cut down the amount of time it takes to work each herd of cattle. I think it's something we need to do. I think it's very important. As far as the cons, I don't know if there is a con to it. Cattle are cattle. They're gonna be what they're gonna be. You know, we did it before, and I thought it worked good. I really thought the last time we did it that the cattle were as consistent all the way through the day, every day, as as I'd ever seen them. Now, were they the best cows we ever cut in there? No. Were they the worst cows we ever cut in there? No. I just hope good, bad, or however it goes, or people feel about it during this show, that we stick with it and, you know, tweak what needs to be tweaked. Mm -hmm. Over time, as you do stuff, you learn, you figure out better ways to do it. And I think that if we'll stick with it, it'll be a really good thing for our sport. So on that same topic, what is that conversation like in the cow box? What are y'all talking about? Uh, what cows are you gonna try to cut during this first go? Well, it'll really kind of depend you know, like I said, with my draw today, first thing I'll try to do is 
I'll try to write every cow down. I'll try to get them all identified because I've got the whole set to figure out what's good and what's bad out of that. And then as they start working in that set, then you know, you'll mark the ones off that's been worked. You'll watch the others as they go around on cuts and stuff like that. There'll be conversations, hey, you know, the, the gray cow acted good there. There's a black ball that acted good on another cut. You just kind of track it all the way through that herd. Oh, blind to right little tier or long tier on the left. You know that one? Right here. So this is finger mod. That's that's the okay, mod. So there the is there is a baldy with long tiers. Is that yeah, what you're talking yeah, about? Okay. It. Yeah. One of the good things about being that deep is you get down there your choices are limited. So you know, there may be only anywhere from three to six cows maybe that are left that you think you can get your horse shown on. Sometimes there's not that many, but you kind of have it condensed down to that. And then of those, what do, you know, what do you think's the best? What I'll do is if I see a cow act good on somebody's cut that they don't cut, I'll find it on my list. I might put a star by it, just something to acknowledge that that cow acted good through there. And then that way, like today, when I get down to the time I go, there will only be a few cows left on my list. And I go, well, I had a star by this one or that one. And that kind of helps me remember in my head, hey, this cow acted good there. Or, mm -hmm. or I might put a minus or something by one if it acted bad on a cut, kind of track it all the way through the herd. This red cow that's a little ducky out here, which one's that? Um, this one might be that little... Is that the ball. little headlight thing? Headlight. Yep, yep. So you've been watching cows, you're gonna be at the tail end of this set. You're walking down, you're about to climb on your horse. What are you focused on? My job. When I first get on my horse back there, I'll pull it around, see how she's feeling. I'm not one that does a whole lot of dry working back there. I'll just make sure that they're listening to me a little bit, getting off my feet, and they're thinking about stopping and rein them around, make sure I can kind of neck rein them around and, and they feel soft and ready to go. Just get their mind on it a little bit. What's the conversation like with your team before you enter that show pen for the first time? It's usually just about cows, and that's mainly going to be between me and my two herd holders, John Mitchell and Paul Hams, but they'll get me out. And it'll just be, you know, about what cows to cut. I think today I'm next to last in a set, so it's going to be limited choices left when I go, and we all need to be on the same page, right? So not only is what cows do we think are the best, but what are all the options in case the plan falls apart down there? Maybe a cow you're going to cut doesn't act good all of a sudden or gets in a bad spot and you're like, all right, what else do you see there that we talked about that I can go cut? The kind of shaggy roan smoke acted okay there. Yeah. It acted good right there. So the black roan throat cow. Yeah. So it's just kind of making sure everybody's on the same page and, and we know what we're looking for down there. Who's making that call? Is it you or are you listening to your, your guys? Well, it, it, I'm the one making the call. They'll tell me what they see, but ultimately the, you know, the reins are in my hands and I'm the one that has to make the decision where to go. And if they're seeing that the cow I'm thinking about cutting to them isn't acting good, you know, they might say, hey, this one, the other one's out here. Well, at, the, at that spot, I have to make a decision. You know, which way am I going to go? And and I'll always try to communicate back to them what I'm doing. Roy said that wrong-throated cow had a bad eye. Yeah. The wrong-throated? Yeah. Okay. I got the other cow here. What is? Okay. How do you stay calm when it doesn't work out and you have to call that audible? I think preparation. And that's why it's so important to know those cattle. If you know the cattle, you know, then you can kind of look around and you can see what your other options are. If you don't know them or you don't know them as good as you should, that's when you tend to panic a little bit because then you're like, oh, crap, I don't, you know, where do I go? Yeah, that's and, me. <laughs> you know, and, and that's just, you know, it, it's experience. It's doing it a lot. But I think that's one of the things for people to take that next step is know the cattle because 
It makes it so much easier when you go down there and, and you know the cows yourself, even with your helps, you know, if they're telling you, hey, cow, you can find it, you know, like mm -hmm. you, you know them and you can find it. So that's the key to me. Just, you gotta know the cattle and be aware of your surroundings. Before I knew you, and then even now, like anytime I'm around Matt Gaines, you have this intensity about you as a competitor. Yet, when you ride in, it's like you're able to go to this zen place mentally. You seem calm. Where does that come from? I'm probably not as calm as maybe as it, it appears sometimes, but, <laughs> but I do think over the years it, it's gotten easier. I mean, you know, I've done this long enough now that I've won the futurity, I've gone out the first go round, you know I mean? And, you know both things can happen and you know i've been here i think several times on horses that i really felt like going into it i had a real good shot to win the futurity on and didn't you know one of them i didn't even get out of the first go round wasn't the horse's fault just stuff happens you know and then the mare i did win it on i wasn't sure i'd get her past the first go round i knew she was a good horse i just didn't know if she was ready thing about the futurity and I think what makes it the futurity you know the the mystique and everything about it is none of us really know and even after you get that horse shown through the first go round well you have some confidence in that but still you know then there there'll be something that you're a little nervous about it going and showing at the next go round too usually you know so I mean I try not to worry about the results if I do my job the best I can the results are going to take care of themselves I think that's what helps me stay calm is, you know, I do, I treat it like my job, you know, and it is my job. I mean, people pay me to train and show their horse, so it is my job. So, you know, I have a responsibility to those owners to go do a good job and stay focused on my job. And I know for me, treating it that way, thinking about it that way, helps me stay calm. Mm -hmm. Because then I don't worry about you know, what happens if you do good or what happens if you do bad or, you know, all that stuff that likes to flow into people's brain, you know. I try just to push all that out and just think about doing my job. I'm gonna list off just a few of the accomplishments Matt Gaines has, has had. So $9 million lifetime earnings, Futurity Champion. You won every major event, 16 Open Futurity finalists. You hold the record for most money earned at weekend shows and most likely you're gonna win the world again this year. So there's not much more for Matt Gaines to prove. So my question is, why do you still do it? I need a job. <laughs> I gotta make money somehow. <laughs> it's, it's really the only thing I know how to do. I still love it. I, I love the horses, I love competing, and all that stuff you just read off right there, none of that means anything today. The horse I'm showing doesn't know or care the cattle don't know or care, and most of the people in there know, but they don't really care either. Every time you go down there, you have to prove yourself again and again and again. It's just, you know, I think when you compete, that's just the way it is. And there will come a day that, you know, I'll be ready to be done, but as long as I feel like I can be competitive and I can still win, then I'll still want to do it. Well, Matt, man, I wish you the best of luck today. Look forward to seeing you show and um, go kick ass. That's the plan. That's the plan.